Okay, we are live on the Idea Coach Network. Hi, how are you? I'm Pat Miller, the Idea Coach, and thank you for tuning in. You are going to check out a live taping of the Pat Miller Show. This is, fingers crossed, this is the big scary vision. This is a national conversation for small business owners. It's not out there right now, and I'm trying to make it happen. We're going to talk about the things that are facing small business owners every day because I believe we're all facing the same thing. And when we work together, we can get over the challenges that we face. So we're going to tape a radio show. We've got uh, four callers on the line today. We've got room for one more. If you want to join us, you can click the link that I'm going to throw up on the screen here, which is ideacoachmedia.com slash call. Call into the show by using that link. It's a video call. We'll record you and put you on the air. All right. So with that, and Sean, if you can't hold on, like if your internet continues to dump, we'll get you on a future show. Just stand by. All right. With that, let's do the show. Here we go. Broadcasting from the small business capital of America, this is WIIFM Milwaukee, an idea coach station. Welcome to the show about running a small business hosted by, what do you know, a small business owner, where we talk about the challenges and choices that we all face on our entrepreneurial journey. All of us are working hard to outrun the rent and solve problems like turning a profit, driving sales, marketing that works, hiring, managing, growing our dreams. It's a lot of stuff. My job is to help our callers and you get clear on what you need to do to be successful. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Pat Miller, The Idea Coach. If you'd like to be a part of a future episode or hear our previous shows, that is all up on our website, patmillershow.com. With that, sit back, and relax and listen in to see what you can pick up to run a better business. And let's welcome in our first caller today. Wendy Babcock is on the line. Wendy, it's so great to see you. Thanks for calling in. Just so everyone knows about you, tell us who you are, what you do, and how we can help you today. Well, thanks, first of all, for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Um, I'm Wendy Babcock. Yes, Wendy as in the big sister from Peter Pan. And I'm very much a nurturer and a dreamer as well. So we have a lot in common. <laughs> I'm known as the Slam Networking Queen because I developed a new way to network so we can show our true personalities and the quirks, everything that comes with us. It's just a whole new way. We slam the door on outdated networking, slam the door on inauthenticity, and we also slam the door on not tracking and monetizing our networking. So I'm also a speaker, author, podcast host, and humorist. Wow. That is a lot of really great stuff. And as if we weren't impressed with you enough, I understand you have a small business celebration to share. So what is it? I do. Yeah. I just recently did my first ever TEDx. Wow. Wow. Like, okay. Yeah. I'm an author. Yeah. I reinvented networking. Yeah. 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 Oh, and by the way, I just did a TEDx. That's amazing. So I'm dying to know what, what was it and how did it go? It was fantastic. So it was TEDx at Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. And um, I originally applied for the 2020 TEDx, but of course, pandemic. So they had it this year in 2020, just this past August. I'm not even a full month out from it yet and still kind of going off that uh, adrenal rush, or adrenaline rush, I mean. Um, it was a really cool experience. You know, the application part of it, getting assigned a coach to help you really hone in on your speaking skills, your presentation writing skills getting great feedback. And then of course the day of, I mean, talk about an adrenaline rush being on that stage on that red, red dot. It was very cool. So you get out there, you stand there. And as someone that's performed quite a bit, there are days when you have it and there are days when you don't, how did it go? I had it that day. Thankfully. Yes. 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 And it's, it was so different because usually when I speak, I have an hour, you know, mostly I have a stage where it's 45 minutes to an hour. And this was 18 minutes or less memorize, which I usually go by more like bullet points when I present. So I have a lot of wiggle room. There's no wiggle room in a TEDx. So having to use different memorization techniques to get me through the whole presentation without dropping the ball, lots and lots of practice helped me kind of show up that day. All right. So now we get to do the learning from you part. How did you get onto the TEDx stage and how would someone do that if they were interested in it? So 
I liked watching TEDx's. So Mel Robbins was probably the first TED talk I ever watched. I absolutely adore her. I pretty much own every book she's ever written. And of course, her five second rule is her was her big TED, big TED talk. And um, I started realizing there was a smaller stage, the TEDx, more locally. And I thought, I'm just going to, you know, why not? I'll see what it's all about. And um, the first time I applied, I made it through the first round, but then I didn't make the final cut. Second time I applied, totally different idea because TEDx is about the idea, not about your speaking skills because people who aren't speakers do TEDx's all the time. And I had come upon this group that I created called the Kindness Bucket Brigade. And it was to help stop online bullying with this crazy technique I just kind of came up with. And it went kind of mini viral. <laughs> and so I based my TEDx on that and how we can help stop online bullying through kindness. And, you know, so applying and um, just really honing in on the idea and then also presenting like um, psychology research that supported why the group was working, um, that helped a lot. So the, the applying part of it, um, it's scary. You know, it, you're, you're kind of putting yourself on this page and, um, and your idea and, and hoping for the best. And the TEDx Fond du Lac team just had a, a fantastic um, interview process. They make it feel very painless, very welcoming. You don't feel so nervous when they call you in. And um, I think I knew about a month after that I had um, gotten a spot on their stage. People think it's a speaking contest. It's an mm -hmm. idea contest, it sounds like. It's all about the idea. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> that's great, right. you know, for the idea collective. No, it's TEDx they want you to focus on the idea and not speaking. So they don't care who you are. They really don't care if you've been on a hundred stages or no stages. It's got to be about the idea and you're not even allowed to really promote it because it's not about you. It's about the idea. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's why you don't see people doing TEDx's on the news and on because you're not allowed to do that. They have very strict rules about that. So now that you've done it, what's been the effect on the business? Because people that aspire to do it, I'm sure they're curious. Well, if I got it, what would it do for me? Have you had feedback? Have you met new people because of it? What is the experience like now that you got off stage? It's interesting because yes, it's all about the idea, but there is a certain something that comes along with having that title. You know, I've done a TEDx. People, oh, you did a TEDx. <laughs> so I've made a lot of more um, networking connections and I'm all about networking and stuff. So I've had a lot of people reach out and just ask me, well, how did you do it? You know, so I've just been sharing my experience of how I did it. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm there to help people figure out their way if it's something they're interested in. I'm always open just to just helping people saying, you know, it's, it's not a hard process. It just takes a lot of patience. I think right. I got very, I think I was really fortunate that I got chosen the second time I applied because that's usually not the case. So, and ironically, the theme that year was care, which is create a ripple effect. And that's what my group was about. So it just happened to go hand in hand. So I think I just kind of lucked out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds amazing, though. And it's very helpful to hear from you today because we all think it's the best speaker wins and having the best idea and really making a difference. Uh, sounds like it was a great result. Uh, thank yeah. you so much for calling in, Wendy, and sharing. And I think you might have helped some people today. And, you know, when you're not on TEDx stages and you're not reinventing networking and you're not, you know, crushing a podcast, you know, hopefully we can connect up, get to know each other a little bit better. So thank you so much for calling in today, Wendy. We appreciate it. This is the Pat Miller Show where we grow, fix, and celebrate small business. This conversation is supposed to, like, sound eerily familiar to you, like, I've faced that problem before, or I've always wondered that. So when we talk to Wendy and we hear about, well, how did she get on a TEDx stage? Maybe that's something you've wondered as well. Up next, we have a guest that's technically on vacation, which is pretty darn cool. <laughs> Ro Couture DeSaro is calling in. Ro, it's great to see you. And I want to know all about you and how we can help. But are you on vacation right now? And if so, where are you? I am on vacation. I am in Long Beach Island, which is uh, New Jersey. That sounds great. It's How long are you there? It's a long island, thin island, just the beach. Um, the beach is about like, I don't know, two minute walk. Well, beaches are great, but talking to me, no, I'm just kidding. You should be out on the beach. But now that we're talking business, we're interested to get to know you. So tell us who you are, what you do, and how we can help you today. 
Okay, awesome. So hi, everyone. So happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Uh, my, I am the CEO and founder of Gutsy Gals Get More. I've been that woman who's been telling everybody for the last 40 years, yes, I said 40, not afraid of my age, uh, that women can have it all and that it's our time and we can do what a man can do. That's something I set out to do when I was in my 20s. And 40 year plus years later, I'm still doing it. And Gutsy Gals Get More is about helping women in business really step into their power, show up authentically. And I'm here to really monetize your servant leadership. Okay. That sounds like a great calling. I'm curious before we ask how we can help you today, how have you helped the mission over 40 years? Because 40 years ago, I'm sure it was a different environment than it is today. So what has it been like to lead this mission over the years? It's... Uh... It's been interesting. It's been fun. I, I love it. I've, I haven't always done it on and off. I actually started my business eight years ago. So I now I laugh and say, well, I'm finally getting paid <laughs> <laughs> for it. Um, and when COVID hit, I, I really stepped into that leadership role even more so. I, I always have this fear that women are just going to hide themselves under the carpet and we're going to lose ground. And I felt we were going to lose ground in COVID. So I stepped into leadership asking women to step up into their self-leadership because we needed that more. Um, I think I think one of the vacationers are trying to get into the house and I locked them out. I think <laughs> they're going to have to wait. They're so, going to they're gonna have to wait. And I, I stepped into that leadership role even more. And now I'm kind of like, you know, I want to start a gutsy gal movement because I know women do this collectively. So, I am. So my question is, is in support is like when starting a movement, you know, first of all, it's like even like, so what does be a gutsy gal mean to you? Mm -hmm. Is it still vile today as it was 40 years ago? I had one gentleman tell me he thinks it's old. I have women tell me I love gutsy gal. That's like, that sounds great. So I'd like to hear from you is that. And then also any tips on starting a movement, creating community, getting those raving fans. And when I have from my um sorry about that and they know i'm going live i guess they don't understand i happen these friends are not business owners let's just put it that way <laughs> they're on real vacation <laughs> and, uh so so that's like kind of my question and by the way i'm also a tedx speaker so i loved everything she said well look at you guys this is just the show of tedx goddesses okay so how do you start a movement you start a movement by saying something that a lot of people feel and maybe someone hasn't said out loud before. That's how movements begin, where you're standing up for something that people can relate to and you're making it about the results that they get from that being said out loud. So what does the Gutsy Gal movement stand for? Why are you on the planet? Can you say that in one sentence? We're questioning the status quo. We're dismantling, cool. we're dismantling the masculine success system that we inherited as women. Okay. and creating an authentic power system. Okay. So how can you say that in Cookie Monster language? How can you put that on a bumper sticker? Because that's beautifully yeah. accurate, way overworded, respectfully. Exactly. Sorry. How exactly. can you say that like Cookie Monster would say that? What I really want to say is women stepping into their authentic power. Okay. Into their autonomous, into leading themselves into like being unshakable, being like, I am who I am and no one's going to stop me from doing what I want to do and something like that. <laughs> okay. So I, I love what you're doing there. Now let's make it a call to action. So yes. that way, if Wendy or Jennifer, who's standing by to come on the show, hears you say it, they'll go, I want that as well. Mm -hmm. So when someone is stepping into their authentic power, what is the result of that? What happens when you do that? They they create programs that are powerful. You, you how about this? We're going to take a pause here. Why okay. don't you go let those people in so they don't burn your beach house down? Okay. Go let Thank them you. in. We're just going to pause here for I'll a second. No, take seconds. your time. It's all good. Okay. It's all good. This is this is a live show, by the way. This is fantastic. Poor Ro. She's on the air. We're solving the needs of an entire gender, and her vacationers won't stop banging on the door. Oh, this is amazing. And this is why God had created oh, editing, God. by the way. So if you're watching live, uh, you're going to see something that you won't hear on the podcast at uh, patmillershow.com. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, this is great. Of course, that was my husband. Oh, it was your husband. Okay, well, you can smack him. That's not a problem. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's go back to it. Yes. When someone is stepping into their authentic power, what is the outcome of that? What happens when it happens? What happens is they create their, they bring their own gifts and talents and, and, and create masterful solutions. And they're able to attract their ideal clients. They're able to make more money. They're able to not also create a business that sacrifices their life. Okay. Okay. So could it be something as simple as you're helping women take control of their life or helping women get the most out of their life or independently lead their life? Something that says, I don't need the, what did you call it? The patriarchy, the, the masculine business sense to help me get as far as I can go. We got this, right? How can you say it in a way? So, and the reason why this is so important is if you need three paragraphs in a textbook to explain what the movement is, then it's not a movement, it's a theory. You want a movement which can be a bumper sticker. And it's so important for people to rally around. So you can say, hi, I'm Ro, and I help women take advantage of their life or take control of their life. You gotta be able to say it really succinctly. And it's gotta be something that's a true benefit to the end user and something that can be rattled off real quick. When you hit on that language, and it's something we can continue to iterate on, either on or off the air. When you hit on that language, the movement will be uh, specific enough where people know what the outcome is, but broad enough that a lot of women want to have the conversation on how they get that outcome as well. One of the things that I've learned building the idea collective for small business owners is it's a community, not an audience. You see a lot of people that do shows and a lot of people that host uh, mm -hmm. webinars and do write their own books. And they're a great host of an audience, which means people want to listen to what they have to say. If you want to start a community, you want to create, throw out a concept, and then you want people to talk about the concept, not talk about you. You may right. be the leader, but you want to throw out a concept that's so audacious and so bold that you want people to lead towards that, that North Star, that guiding principle of what you're putting forth. I, so, I love that, you know, community, not an audience. And being that, because it's, it's not me, and I know that, but yeah, it's about that community. But you are just as as important as someone that's leading leading an audience. You just have to put forward this concept and be the the keeper of the flame. Come mm. on, ladies, we're going. We are going this way. Not come on, ladies, follow me. And there's a real difference. Yes. And so what you need to say, and we need to continue to massage this messaging, where people feel like when they take part in your community, they're getting towards the ideal outcome that they're seeking. They're taking control. They're making more money. They're making the most of what they have. They are uh, turning their back on the system. They are breaking the rules of business. They are something. But you have to find a way to say it that people go, yeah, I want, I want in. Yeah. And that's why I say, like, it's a be a gutsy gal. It's like be a gutsy gal. But the definition has got to be clear of what a gutsy gal is. Right? And a gutsy gal gets what she wants. Yeah. And I like G's. So the thing you want is alliteration. If you want a bumper sticker, gutsy gals get what they want. And well, what my, they want. This is this gutsy gals get more. Perfect. That's fantastic because that tells them what their outcome is, is something that they can define. You want something that is big enough of a calling, but not so specific that it's just for CEOs or just for people trying to maximize their master's degree. You want something that everyone can get around if your audience is women. That's a very broad audience. You want something that they can all rally around. So women get more or gutsy gals get more or gutsy gals um, get what they want. Basically saying you're no longer going to take no for an answer. So right. the next thing I would recommend that you do is I would try and find maybe four or five founding premises for what Gutsy Gals is all about. And if you already have it, that's great. Then you need to go forward and say, here's where we're meeting, either in person or virtual. And then synchronous, meaning a Zoom call, or asynchronous, 
where people are logging into a community or they're connecting with each other on a message board or a Facebook group where they can log in where they want. So you start directing people towards where they can have this conversation for gutsy gals to get more. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes. The last thing that I'll say about it is make it as two things I'll say. This is the last thing until I say one more thing <laughs> is make it consistent. If you're going to have a conversation every week at four o'clock on Tuesday, have it every week, no matter what, four o'clock on Tuesday. And then the other thing is find a way to celebrate the members in the community. If you want it to be a community, you have to find a way that everybody gets time to share what they experience around this subject. And you have a consistent conversation where you show off everybody and everybody's invited. One of the phrases that we say inside the idea collective is we are open to all, but not for everyone. Mm. Anyone that has a small business can come, but only the small business owners that are willing to ask questions and get vulnerable or give help, even when they get nothing out of it. Those are the people that are welcome in the community. So find what that phrase is for you mm. run for office on it and don't ever stop. Beautiful. Thank you. Does something, that help? Something to think about on my vacation. No, 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 no. Don't think about that on your vacation. Think about that after your vacation. That's you need to be so thinking beautiful. about Long Island iced teas and feet <laughs> in the sand and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of fun. Man, we got two TEDx speakers already on the air today. One of them is rewriting the rules of networking. And the other one is uh, trying to champion an entire half of the population. Like... <laughs> have no small dreams, right? That's what's fun about the show is we learn from everybody along the way. This is the Pat Miller Show where we grow, fix, and celebrate small businesses. We still have time to come on the show. If you want to make an appearance on this episode, you can hit the link on the screen, ideacoachmedia.com slash call, or you can schedule the time at your convenience at patmillershow.com. As of now, one caller yet to go. Jennifer Buchholz is calling in from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We will hear from her in just a moment on The Pat Miller Show. Okay, we're in a commercial break. We're in a commercial break. Ro, you're wonderful. Don't really smack your husband. I was teasing about that. All right, JB, stand by. You're next. All right, here we go. Oh, and Wendy and Ro, if you want to hang out for the rest of the show, that's wonderful. If you want to pop off, love you guys. Thank you for coming on. We'll put the show out a week from Tuesday. So thank you both. But you can hang out if you want. We'll talk after we get off the air. Okay, here we go. Welcome back to the Pat Miller Show, a show built just for you, the small business owner that is working hard to build your dream. This show grows by you taking action in a few different ways. We're really trying to get ahead on Twitter. On Twitter, our handle is at Pat Miller Show. You can rate and review the show on iTunes or your favorite podcatcher, but most of all, subscribe to the show and join our callers on their journey so we can all grow together. Up next on the show, Jennifer Buchholz calling in from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Hello, friend. It's great to see you. I know you, but not everybody else does. So tell us who you are, what you do, and how we can help you today. Hi, everybody. Jennifer Buchholz. I'm the owner of Excel and Flourish, and we specialize in corporate training, specifically in the technical space, um, Microsoft training, end user stuff, and we support virtual events. Okay. Very, very cool. So how can we help you today? What's on your mind? So over the years, I may have come up with a whole bunch of content, right? Video content, all the trainings, stuff gets recorded all the time. And there's times where I'm asked like, hey, do we have any video proof of the stuff that you've done, samples and things? I'm just looking for like really tactical solutions on how to, I mean, I understand how to save files, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm looking for like, what's the easiest way to put all this content together. I don't know if I should be tagging it for what my possible uses would be. We do turn some into micro content. I just, I am overwhelmed with the amount of content and considering I'm talking to a dude who produces a ton of content, like perhaps he has suggestions for me. Now let's talk about what the end user needs to experience out of it, because where you put the content will be driven by how people will consume it. So you need first off content out there so you can get more gigs. Like, hey, show us what you've done. Is that what you're saying? So you can easily share the content you've done for, for proof? Yes. And I probably have some of that on YouTube. Sort of. Because I've not been consistent. So I do have some things on a YouTube channel. 
and that's one place. But I'll, I will say it's, I am not out there trying to be the end user mm -hmm. Microsoft trainer on YouTube. There are many amazing people who do that. That's not what I'm going for. So you you really assess that right, Pat. You said for like, for me to get more gigs, again, social proof, right? Mm -hmm. Like, does that help? Yeah, absolutely. So what I would recommend is I think you're on the right track with YouTube. Okay. So YouTube will allow you to post video content. And before I learned how YouTube worked, I always thought you'd post something to YouTube and the whole world could see it. Not so. You can post something to YouTube and it can either be private, so no one but the people you allow to see it will see it, or, and this is where you might wanna go, you can use the unlisted feature. When you use the unlisted feature on YouTube, it's up there, but no one can search and find it. But you can get in and get the link and share the link with anybody, and anybody that has the link can see it. It's not by invite only. So maybe the solution for what you're going for is as simple as loading all the content up to YouTube and then creating playlists based on software. So let's say it's Excel, right? That's your, that's your jam. So you've got five different videos on Excel. You create an Excel playlist. You put all the videos on that playlist and then share that playlist as an unlisted link with, with potential leads or even on your website. People could see your past training on this subject and it will sort every single one of your videos all in a row. That, so I actually have tried that strategy. I just haven't thought about it in this particular use case. For a little while, I was doing a topic of the month Mm -hmm. And I would, so I'd create 20 videos on Microsoft to do, and I would lo upload them to a playlist. Um, and then when the month was over, I'd just move the, change it from a public setting to private or unlisted. Sure. So I think that makes sense. Now it's, now you've got my wheels spinning though, because I'm like, oh, so I could perhaps have like my signature in my emails with an indicate like, so it's, Again, I'm not really going for public consumption as much, but strategic private consumption. So that might be a, a method. That certainly could be a way to do JBTV or something that shows off all the different stuff that you've done right inside your email signature. And I like the idea of your different areas of expertise. These playlists would easily show off your range maybe some in-person coaching stuff, some virtual coaching stuff, producing some online shows, which is something I know that you're getting into as well. But it sorts things really easily. And the other thing, just to say it out loud, there are emerging competing places where you can post and share video. I, I just have not found the upside of getting off of YouTube. It's the second biggest search engine on the planet. Right. And it's like, why would you run against the tide? Why not use YouTube the way that you could use it? And it sounds like that could be an easy way to do it. Well, and even I'm thinking like from a video storage perspective, I, don't, I have not seen any limits on YouTube for how much content you can put out there. Is that, does that even exist? That's a good question. I don't know that exactly. I know that I've got decades worth of stuff up there and it seems that they keep on taking it. So as long as they're taking it, I'm going to keep on posting it. So hopefully that's something you can do to organize everything. Because you're right. One of the challenges that we have is we create content and we create content and we create content. But then how do you make sense of it? How do you organize it? How do you let others discover it? Especially when you're trying to get hired, they don't want to subscribe to your show. They just want to see you do your thing. So right. sometimes when you put it that way, uh, it will help you get future gigs. Well, way to go, Jennifer and uh, JBTV. That is kind of fun. You might need to do that just because it's kind of fun to say. It's been fun talking with our small business owners today. Now, hopefully, seriously, hopefully, either through our small business celebration with Wendy or talking with Roe and JB about the challenges they're facing. Maybe you have faced a challenge like that as well. Hopefully it sounded a little bit familiar to you. That's what this show is all about. And if you want to experience support like this every day, you might want to check out the Idea Collective collaboration community for small business owners. That's where a select group of entrepreneurs have decided to get together and collaborate with one another to grow our businesses together. It's kind of like your own personal board of directors. It's kind of cool like that. If you want to find out more about the Idea Collective or you want to sign up for a future episode of this show, you can find everything on my website, patmillerideacoach.com. Thank you so much to our callers today. Thank you for tuning in. I'm your host, Pat Miller, the Idea Coach, here to help you on your small business journey. It's your dream. Don't grow it alone. 
Okay, we're done. We're done. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We're going to talk to the callers off the air. I would love to see you on a future episode. PatMillerShow.com is the website. We'd love to have you be a part of the thing. And telling you right now, like, raise your hand if you put intentions out in the universe. You hear me? Hi. We're going to make this a national show, and you're going to say you were here back in the early day. Do you hear me? So call